Okay. Hey, everybody. It's uh, Vinny from Marketing. Today, we're going to be interviewing Ben Gervais. He's the co-founder and tech lead of KeyFi, which is a decentralized application. And we're going to be talking to him about the upcoming KeyFi Pro launch, which all of you know about. Um, we'll be going over the platform, uh, what it does, the benefits. We'll be getting a development update from him as well. And we'll be taking some questions from the community. So we have some questions lined up. Um, yeah, let's get right into it. How are you, Ben? I'm good. I'm good. Thanks. How are you doing? Doing good. You ready to go? You strapped in? Yes. Yes, sir. I am. Don't worry. Softball questions only. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, Ben, can you give us a, a, a just a 30-second pitch on what KeyFi the company is, as well as KeyFi the application so far? Sure, 30 seconds. Are you going to time me on this one? Or? <laughs> All right. Um, okay, so uh, KeyFi as a company is a, is a small team that is uh, building products for DeFi, um, mostly on, on Ethereum at the start, but also branching out into Binance Smart Chain, um, Polygon, and other, other blockchains um, that we have on our roadmap there. Um, but again, it's we're just focusing on building tools for DeFi. Um, we're not, not on the protocol level, but more on the app layer. Um, and we have a heavy focus on uh, using data, AI, integrations, automation, things like that. So you're a software company. We're a software company. Yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Um, all right, and what is KeyFi Pro and what is the difference between KeyFi Pro and the existing core application? Absolutely, so uh, KeyFi Core is uh, a basic app um, that has you know, a very comfortable UI. Uh, it makes use of some of our integrations uh, and allows people a way to manage DeFi on multiple platforms within you know, a single user interface, um, you know, offering a few tools um, to help make that easier. Uh, then KeyFi Pro is a more comprehensive offering, um, which basically is able to um, make better use of all the data that we're collecting and displaying and um, offering some new features like uh, an alert system that's tied into the data, a research dashboard to help you um, learn more about different tokens, platforms, protocols, um, and a strategy manager to help you design strategies um, that have to do with, you know, trading or yield farming and, um, you know, organize those, monitor them, man manage them better. Got it. So am I looking at the strategy manager here or, oh, this is the dashboard. This is the see. dashboard. Yeah. Dashboard, got it. Um, and then has anything changed since this announcement? Because I think the announcement for KeyFi Pro was announced in June, um, along with this landing page. Has anything changed significantly since then? Uh, we have additional features that we're working on uh, that are not listed here. Um, but ultimately, no, the, and, you know, there are improved designs and obviously the actual, you know, uh, development process that's been taking place, um, which, you know, you're not going to see on the landing page, but um, no, we're basically going to come out with those, those core features that are already listed there. Um, you know, the research dashboard, the strategy manager, designer, builder, um, the alert system, and, um, you know, have that all, all, all wrapped up into a nice package. Um, those will be the, you know, still the same core features there. There are additional features um, that we'll be um, teasing in the near future as well. Um, but I, I will keep my lips sealed. Meantime, ben, can we back up a little bit and just discuss uh, why KeyFi Pro was created? Uh, you know, what sort of pain point or uh, challenges are we trying to solve here in, in the DeFi space? It's a young space. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so basically what I want is I want to have a tool that I'm going to be able to go in there and uh, I want to be able to design a strategy, right? And I want to outline um, what are the specific actions that I need to take um, you know, what, what interactions with which smart contracts for how much for which assets, all these, all these values, I want them, um, organized. Right. Uh, and then I want to be able to structure that, um, within the context of DeFi composability. Right. Um, so it's like, if I do these things first and then I do another thing after that, and then I do another thing after that, you know, how does that all work together? Then I want to be able to monitor these things independently from other balances in my wallet. Um, you know, and just, just basically isolate those, um, those specific things. Um, and then 
yeah, basically be able to manage that, um, you know, monitor the ROI on these positions. And, um, you know, if there's some, you know, consistent action that needs to take place, be able to do that and uh, always have that at, at um, within our own reach. And then um, ultimately, I want to build this out into something that is, you know, taking these, these strategies that I have for DeFi and um, supplementing them with uh, like a lot of data, um, you know, to optimize them. Um, and then, you know, also couple that with automation, right? So you have data and automation alongside your strategy. I mean, that can just reduce the amount of time that you spend managing it. And then also increase your profitability basically, cause you know, you're having better data, better decisions. You have automation, which means there's less reliance on, on human, less opportunity for human error, you know, things like that. Got it, Ben. Can we, um, actually cut back to the strategy manager, uh, mm -hmm. This would be the sort of premier feature of Keyfi Pro. Is that correct? Yeah, you would say that this is the flagship feature of Keyfi Pro. Feature. Yeah. Can you discuss the uh, the sort of benefit and the issue that you see in the existing DeFi space as it pertains to, this, to the strategy manager? Like, how will this make people's lives easier and, and simplified? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so basically, right now. What, how would you how would you manage a strategy if you if you wanted to come with strategy what would you do you take out a notepad and write down some notes pretty much or or make a spreadsheet maybe and oh, a spreadsheet track things manually in there yeah uh, I mean if you're pretty advanced maybe you could do your own API integrations and connect that to an Excel spreadsheet or something use macros whatever right I mean you know you could probably hack, hack together something that's reasonable, right? Um, what I want is I want an intuitive user interface. I want, you know, an actual, you know, visual representation of my strategy. Um, and then I want it, want it to be all automatic um, so that when I'm, you know, I've, I've created my strategy, I've designed it, um, you know, I've deployed it, um, you know, and then I'm monitoring the data about it, looking at the ROI, looking at, you know, the historical performance of it. Um, I can cross-reference my strategies, look at, see, you know, okay, let's say I have five strategies running, which one is the best, which one is the worst, uh, and then have easy access to management tools, right? So have the integrations for those right in the dashboard. Even if you had, you know, uh, a system that you hacked together yourself with an Excel, you know, and API integrations, you still have 10 tabs open, you know, interacting with all the different DeFi platforms, right? So that's, again, the other benefit is have the all-in-one integrations in the same system. And does this apply to staking strategies or yield strategies, uh, or are there others as well? It could be, yeah, it could be anything like, you know, staking, a liquidity mining, uh, yield farming, you know, that type of thing could also just be used for trading, you know, to monitor your own positions, right? And, um, you know, what do you have to do to manage your trading positions on DeFi? Maybe you have... You know, are you just spot wallet or are you using a derivatives platform, you know, or using multiple multiples of them, you know? Gotcha. So right now on the landing page, there's a design, simulate and optimize uh, procedure. How far are you in development in terms of, of these sort of steps? Right. So these screenshots are outdated already. Um, obviously, those came out very preliminary um, when we released that landing page and that should be updated. Um so yeah, basically the um, on the development side, it's it's pretty pretty straightforward how how it's meant to work for this first version. Obviously, with any software that we're building like this, um, you know we're able to iterate on it and improve it over time. Still, so there's going to be you know constant sort of incremental developments on these features, right? Um, but for this initial version, let's say um, basically uh, we have. A, a set number of actions and actions are basically like transaction templates for different DeFi platforms, right? Um, and then you're basically able to organize these into groups um, and then have those groups of actions be part of your strategy. Um, and then this helps you basically implement your strategy and then, um, you know, go through all of the different transactions that you need to do in order to, you know, create a position, right? Uh, then once you have a position created, then you're able to monitor it um, and look at how it's doing. And finally, um, you're able to manage it, you know, having those additional actions on there if you need to, you know, uh, withdraw rewards from a pool or something, or if you need to um, rebalance, you know, 
you know, certain allocations, right? Uh, and having having those actions there available to you in right in the strategy. Um, the simulation and historical backtesting engine, um, that's not going to come out on the first version of it still, um, because there is a lot of sort of um, foundational work that has to happen on that. Um, and it's, uh, yeah, not the easiest thing to build. So and when you say back, <laughs> um, that'll, that'll be coming in later. Yeah. When you say back test, you mean you'll be pulling in historical data and users can see how that's performed in hindsight or going going backwards, right? Yeah, exactly. To, to however much data is available, obviously, because again, DeFi is very uh, new, right? Um, so there isn't a whole lot of data in some cases, but let's say if you did have a strategy and um, there is historical back data that goes back, let's say, you know, a year or something, right? And you could see how well it would have performed over the past year, you know, based on, you know, those, you know, interest rates, TVL, utilization rate, you know, um, uh, price volume action, things like that. Gotcha. Um, so is there a difference between simulate and optimizing? Yes. Strategy? Yeah. Simulate is using a simulator to sort of say, okay, if you have these variables, this is what it would project out to. Whereas optimize is just, you know, um, using actions to change your actual strategies position. Are there similar platforms out there that sort of allow you to project and um, deploy a strategy cross chain, cross platform, cross asset, uh, or is this relatively innovative in the space? You think? Um, there are projects that are DeFi aggregators, um, and there are projects that offer some tools to help you simplify certain aspects of DeFi. But I have not seen any tool that is promising to build what we're working on right because there's general aggregators and then there is like certain like il you know impermanent loss trackers just simple mm -hmm. kind of like portfolio trackers as well but not really an all-in-one that you'd see in the tradfi space like for example on these like big brokerage platforms or bloomberg terminals you see you know they're aggregating news they're aggregating you know back yeah. tested data etc um like i know I'm just I'm just thinking off the top of my head some of like the the largest DeFi sort of aggregation dashboards right um, two of them are just really focused on having as many integrations as possible and and which is a, a, you know a valuable thing right you know they just want anybody to connect a wallet and just see everything that's in there right um, and that's you know I don't know what their you know five year plan is for example right but then, you know that's a useful thing. Um, but that's not what we're doing still. Our objective is not to just connect everything in DeFi into one, one space, right? We want to build useful tools um, that help, let's say, the most popular 80% of platforms and apps, assets, um, you know, that have, or the most, or sorry, not even the most popular 80%, even the most popular 20% that has, you know, 80% of the liquidity um, that's on DeFi, right? So it's the, you know, the main, the main things that the majority of users are going to be using still, um, not necessarily supporting all of the small niche projects still. Um, and then coupling that with really powerful tools, like you said, like, you know, having a, a research dashboard, that's like a Bloomberg terminal, but, you know, um, you know, on steroids with like, you know, extra charts and, you know, um, data analysis and machine learning model access, things like that. Right. Uh, and then, you know, with, uh, all of the integrations that are in there as well too. Right. So you can just do everything from one place, uh, manage the whole thing. Right. So yeah, that's the, uh, that's the strategy manager. Um, I'm going to scroll up to the research dashboard and, you know, this reminds me of, again, I mentioned the TradFi kind of Bloomberg terminals, some of the big brokerage platforms like Interactive Brokers or, or Thinkorswim, um, the way this pulls together news and data reminds me of that. And I haven't really been able to find a platform in DeFi that arrogates news as well as price data. I think there are some websites like maybe CoinMarketCap has some news, but not a lot. Um, was that your goal uh, for the research dashboard? Right. So the research dashboard um, is, you know, again, another product that's going to see, you know, evolution in terms of how its features are built and, uh, and all that. Um, but basically what I want is something where I don't have, to, you know, I want to eliminate tabs as much as possible, right? And have everything, you know, 
in one place, right? So if I have to have, you know, CoinGecko and, you know, CoinMarketCap and, you know, six other, you know, uh, information sites up, uh, you know, it defeats the point when one, I can, you know, streamline it into, you know, a nice clean user interface, which is useful, um, have it, you know, all my integrations at, uh, you know, at, within arm's reach, right? You know, I can look and then take action you know, in the same user interface, which is good. Um, and then again, also the um, the design and how things are fed to you, right? Um, so I, you know, when you're looking at a, a crypto blog like Coin Telegraph, for example, right? Uh, and there's you know big pictures and ads and you know all this stuff, right? Um, whereas if we're skimming the headlines and you know the clips from the RSS feeds, um, that can give you you know, a lot of information that's in a clean, easy to read, easy to consume format. And then if you want to, you just click through to read the full article, right? Um, so it's just, a, it's a better experience that way still. Yeah, I read um, that. So yeah, having having all this information in one, one place, nicely designed, well-organized, you know, convenient. Um, and then eventually, again, this is part of our long-term plan is to have all of these different data points, including, you know, um, news, chart, data, everything, right? Um, have that connected to the alert system and the alert system connects to the automation system. So basically you could connect any data point to an alert, collect, connect that alert to an automation action, you know, and, you know, you, you could create some very, very powerful workflows um, with those tools. Yeah, that, that actually relates to one of the community questions, which I'll bring up in the next segment. Um, I do have one last question about the research dashboard. I saw, I noticed that you can aggregate or you can um, view news per token. So if you're looking up, let's say the Uniswap token, um, you're aggregating news based on that token, that symbol. Um, how are you doing that? So how, how are we aggregating news? Yeah, so per, like how are you separating all the news per token? Okay, so there's several things that we do to analyze sort of the news. So one is like you have to collect them, right? So we use APIs and RSS feeds. Um, to collect um, the actual news, then yeah, basically you're able to use something called uh, natural language processing or NLP, and NLP is able to basically analyze um, any of the text content, um, and you know it can do things like break down a sentence into parts of speech, and it could look for keywords and organize by keywords. Gotcha. Not to be confused with uh, neuro linguistic programming. <laughs> No, that is a different thing. Yeah, that is a totally different thing. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I think we can move on to the next segment. Um, yeah, we can talk general development. Uh, can you just talk generally, generally about how development is going? You know, any successes, any challenges you want to share with us so far? Um, you know, I know that we've hired a, uh, a new data scientist. Can you just talk generally to that? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, Obviously, it's not the simplest um, thing that we're trying to build, um, but I think that we've done um, a pretty pretty admirable job on the part of the team. Still, I'm pretty happy with um, with the new designs that keep coming out. Um, I'm very happy with um, some of the work that yeah our new uh, data scientist uh, Brian has come in. So, um, just give you some quick background. He's a, a math PhD. Um, uh, from Canada as well to um, out, west, out west here alongside with me. Um, and uh, yeah, he's, he's uh, working on, uh, again, like I was mentioning about the, um, the NLP uh, machine learning and then also uh, different um, uh, machine learning models that we'd already spoken about before, like the interest rate prediction, uh, things like that. And um, also um, doing a general prediction uh, model as well too, which is uh, classifying things into like strong buy, holds, strong sell, sell buy, right? Like, um, and uh, yeah, we've had uh, we've had some good discussions and conversations, sort of um, talking about how the different formulas are implemented for certain technical indicators. Um, so you know, some of these things we looked at, like uh, MACD, RSI, Bollinger Bands, things like that, right? Um, you know, looking at, uh, and then obviously also the big focus um, has uh, been on improving our um, data pipeline, right? Um, so we have, uh, you know, we've identified four different areas where we want to have, um, you know, specific data coming in. And, um, you know, we've identified different ways that we want to use that data, um, how we want to manipulate it, how we want to analyze it, how we want to um, display that to the user still, right? Um, 
so yeah that's been that's been going really well on that end and then obviously on the on the core app um, we've just released the borrow uh, functionality so now it's integrated with compound and Aave's uh, borrow function alongside the deposit um, which is something that we need to happen in order to really um, uh, let people sort of get a wider usage out of out of DeFi, and we'll, and we'll continue. You know, again, we have a long integrations roadmap. Um, you know, there and there are several more that we'll be adding along with um, additional blockchains as well to um, to be able to switch networks. So, yeah, I mean, yeah, we have a lot lots to do, but um, you know, it's been it's been going pretty good, yeah, pretty good, yeah. <laughs> Good, good. Yeah, I'm trying to load up some of the community questions right now. Just give me one minute. Yeah. Um, maybe I'll just read them. Let's go with, yeah. So the first question from the community is, uh, what is Keyfi Pro's target user? Right. Um, so the target user for Keyfi Pro is, you know, anyone who is serious about managing their crypto positions in uh, in DeFi, and this could be either again like a trading position or you know a, what we call a yield position, which is you know basically any combination of like you know staking, yield farming, liquidity mining, that type of thing, right? So it's re really focused on users again who who want to have more tools, who want to have a better user experience for DeFi. Gotcha. And who, yeah, there's also a distinction. Who are serious about uh, who are serious about it. You know? Yeah, and there's it's not for the casual guy who wants to like put you know a hundred bucks into you know ether or something right <laughs> you know, like, or whatever right you know there's there are other options that are you know simple if if somebody just wants to like buy and hold um you know they don't really need all these tools right they could just you know buy some bitcoin and put it in a wallet and hold on to it for five years or whatever right that's not our target user um, you know, our target user is people who are serious about DeFi um, and want to use DeFi uh, and want a better way to use it. Um, and, you know, we're going to be offering tools that, uh, you know, haven't been offered before. So it's going to be interesting to see how people react to that. And, um, you know, I'm a big believer in, um, in cycles, like feedback loops, right? Um, so we, we get to release something, we get feedback, we improve it. You know, we get feedback on the improvement, you improve it some more, right? Um, so it would be interesting to see what kind of response we get when we launch this. That kind of relates to the next question, which is, um, yeah, this question is, how do you ensure product market fit? Right. So I think the first thing is to build the product um, and then release it to the market and see if it fits. I don't know, man. This is a weird question for me because, um, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm not, I'm still not entirely sure what product market fit means. Um, I know I've heard people say it a lot. Um, <laughs> as far as, I mean, in my, in my experience building software still is um, everything's a thesis, right? Everything's a hypothesis until you actually release something, right? So um, we have our theories and then basically we will bring our theories via our product, which we launched to the market and the market will either validate or invalidate that theory. You know, just the same like you would for a trading theory or a trading thesis, right? Or investment thesis, you know, you, the market will give you the feedback, right? You know, whether it's a trading market or in this case, a market of consumers. So, yeah, I mean, we'll either fit or we won't. And if we don't, then we'll pivot or, you know, adjust, right? Course correct, you know. Got it. All right. Third question is, uh, what's the launch schedule like? Is it going to be rolled out in tiers? Ha, nice try. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I'm not going to give any way, give any specific dates here, um, but I can tell you the structure of it, um, which is basically we're going to be launching a private beta for Keyfi Pro first. So the first step is the private beta, and the private beta will be available only to people who are staking Keyfi tokens and or have a valid DeFi credential, um, like the identity credentials that we offered for staking on the V1 pool. Um, so those are the only two groups that are going to have access to Keyfi Pro. Um, now, after we have garnered sufficient testing and feedback and gone through, again, the, that um, improvement cycle, uh, like I mentioned before, then we'll launch a private beta. So private beta, oh, sorry, sorry, not private, the public beta. The public beta will be open to everyone. Um, you know, within, you know, the certain, um, 
you know, requirements for accessing it. So that's either going to be staking or paying some kind of a subscription fee. Um, obviously for the public beta, that's going to be heavily discounted, um, you know, as an early adopter discount. Um, but yeah, you won't, the staking won't be the hard requirement still. It will still be the preferred way to access Keyfi Pro will be by staking Keyfi tokens. Um, but you'll also have the option to pay by credit card um, as a monthly subscription fee. Uh, and then finally, the after again, we go through uh, you know more of the uh, improvement cycles. Uh, so we get feedback, improvement, feedback, improvement. You know, uh, Then we will do a full launch. Uh, at that time, the beta discounts um, will get dropped and it'll just be the normal price. So in the private beta, what features are going to be available first, do you think? Yeah, this is going to be strategy manager, alerts, and research dashboard um, alongside all of the other additional ones. Uh, and we'll also include the uh, Nexo integration as well. Nexo integration. Okay. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So these are sort of the secondary features, the smart alerts and the CFI integrations, AKA Nexo integration. Yeah. Okay. Next question. So this is actually another one recently from the community. Will Keyfi Pro allow limit orders? Right. Um, so there's a few different ways to answer this question. Um, we're going to be looking at integrating um, any on-chain methods that are already currently available. Now, I believe that one inch does allow limit orders. Um, so we will take a look and see if we can integrate with that. Um, and if, if yes, that's great. And if not, we have already sort of developed alternate ways to do limit orders on DeFi, um, namely through the automation and alert system, right? So you would create an alert for, you know, the price that you want to buy at, and then connect that alert to an automation action that would trigger that. Now, um, for automation, automation basically unlocks all kinds of, you know, super powered features, let's say. Um, and there's a couple ways that we have for approaching automation. Um, one of them is to do automation where you add tokens that you want to be managed by automation into a smart contract and you allow specific actions from that smart contract to be accessed by another address. And then that could be either like a, like a keeper bot, for example, on keeper keep network, um, or another, you know, um, automation server, or it could be your own automation server even, um. And the second one would be to have a local desktop app. So this would be with the self-key desktop wallet um, and have the automation system in there where you run it yourself and it basically controls your local soft wallet um, automatically through a desktop application um, where it's, you know, is again, connecting to the Keep by Pro API to get the data and get the updates and then, you know, triggering that action inside of your own system. So there are pros and cons to both of these approaches. Um, we're actively developing both of them uh, and we'll let sort of the, the market decide which one it likes better. Ben, can you clarify what a automation action is? Yeah, absolutely. So an action, when I say action, I just mean it's a transaction. Um, so like swap, deposit, borrow, you know, whatever, right? Um, yeah, that's all I mean by action. And right. then uh, automated just means that it's connected to a condition that will trigger that action, right? So like it's price. Like if price equals this, then do that, you know, that type of thing. Gotcha. And these actions are already part of the core um, apps. It's the core apps modules, right? So that, well, the the actions right now they're just part of the integrations library, and there are certain ones of them, but they're not defined as actions in Keyfi Pro. They'll be defined as actions, uh, and then used in the strategy manager, where you're you know gr uh, grouping those actions into groups and putting the groups into your strategy, you know, etc. Um, the way that that works. Gotcha. Okay, this user also had a, a, a sub question, part two to. Um, his question, which is, I'm not sure if I fully understand it, but I think it boils down to, can you automatically unstake as an automated action based on a price, if a price has been hit, um, auto unstake. So I'm guessing he's maybe staking tokens in his, on his earn page. Anything can be automated, right? So you could take any data point that we have available that we can create a smart alert with, right? And just you connect that smart alert to an action. And as long as we have the automation system present, so that's going to be, again, either 
you know, a smart contract that's being controlled by an automation server, or you have your own sort of self-hosted, um, you know, the uh, automation system that is connected to your soft wallet, um, then yes, you can, you can do anything that involves, you know, uh, a condition based on a certain data point and then, a, you know, a contract, smart contract interaction, right? So sh short answer, yes. <laughs> right. All right, final question from the community. Um, yeah, what is KeyFi's approach to security, our funds, hashtag Seifu? Right, so KeyFi is a non-custodial uh, decentralized application. Right. Um, so that means we never have custody of your funds. You always have full control of all the funds that you manage. Right. Um, we do have some smart contracts, you know, like our token and uh, staking contracts. Um, and, you know, as, as we release more uh, smart contracts, you know, that will um, offer more, um, I guess, uh, more value to, to our users still um, through different means. Now, as far as the security for those smart contracts goes, um, you know, we go through a um, audit process with a third party um, uh, hack-in. Uh, basically they check all of our contracts, um, you know, before they go uh, and get deployed still. Um, and obviously internally, you know, we familiar, familiarize ourselves with security best practices, um, you know, both in terms of smart contract development, but also from application development as well too. Um, you know, so handling, um, you know, handling any data um, that is pertinent to a user. Um, you know, as you know, if you have a email, email and password login, right? You know, that's so we follow standard, you know, uh, security best practices there still. Um, but other other than that, um, no, we're fortunate enough that the way that DeFi is structured, that we don't have to. Um, have security for people's funds because it's, you know, it's non-custodial um, uh, platform. So that, um, that de-risks it in a big way there. Yeah. I mean, coming from traditional finance, I can't, you know, like emphasize how mind blowing that is to not have to take custody of customer money. I mean, I think a lot mm. of people in traditional finance, they really don't want to, but they have to, because there's no other way right. technologically <laughs> um, and all the licensing and all the compliance and all that stuff that comes with it. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah. it's a huge entry to barrier to entry into that market. So yeah, DeFi just opens so many things up for, um, providing services, you know, at a, that people need and people benefit from. That's yeah, exactly. I mean, we can focus on innovation and development, you know, instead of compliance and when yes. compliance requirements come, we'll be ready for that. I mean, um, you know, again, uh, with all the things that I've worked on at Selkie about, you know, um, you know, decentralized identity, self-sovereign identity, um, you know, verifiable credentials, um, you know, uh, DIDs, stuff like that, right? Um, you know, we've done a ton of groundwork on this. So, I mean, what it, you know, if, if, if regulations really come in heavier to DeFi, I mean, we're, we're ahead of the game on that still. Um, you know, right. uh, you talk about our partnership with Alchemy, right? You know, they're already creating permission pools um, and working with us actively to create um, identity um, so like a, like a reusable, reusable identity um, tokens kind of, right? So like, um, you know, we're, we're still still going to be finalizing exactly how, how we're going to do that. But, um, you know, we have a bunch of the work that's been done from Selkie as well, um, you know, in terms of, you know, the wallet, credentials platform, um, you know, DIDs, stuff like that again. Um, so yeah, that should, should be fine either way still. Okay, so I think that wraps up the... Uh the community questions aspect. I guess the last thing is, do you want to add anything else for this uh, August monthly update in terms of next steps, future integrations? Maybe you want to talk about the next uh, chain. Um, anything else in development you want to mention to the community? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so we have a few a few things um, that are happening right now. Um, we have a, a big performance issue um, that we're working on for um, all of the balance fetching. Um, it's, it's not an easy problem. I don't think people understand, um, you know, what's actually involved <laughs> with that. Like, they're just like, oh, why is it not working? You know, and that's fine. We don't, like, ultimately, we want our users to be able to use the app and not have to worry about these things. That's that's our job, right? Um, you know, but we are we are working on performance improvements, especially around around that area. Um, you know, stability of the app um, and uh, yeah, re reliable balance fetching um, that is consistent. Um, 
so on that note, we're starting to work with different partners uh, in terms of um, having node access um, to different blockchains um, to try and prove that. Um, next, next chain is, uh, is Polygon. I think we already um, discussed this previously at some point, but um, yeah, we're looking to launch on Polygon like as soon as possible, really. I mean, there are a few internal holdups, but um, you know, once those get get uh, broken through, then um, we're gonna, gonna be launching a token on Polygon, and then we'll also launch uh, liquidity mining and staking on there as well too. Um, yeah, we need to make sure that the um, the bridge works with them. So there's a the native Matic bridge um, that we want to be a part of. Um, that's gonna require a wrapper token. Um, just heads up. So I mean. Um, and just based on the way that the current tokens are modeled, um, there's going to have to be a wrapper token. So as soon as that gets released, um, you know we'll have a we'll have a user interface for everyone to interact with that, and then they'll be able to bridge the ERC twenty tokens on the Polygon and interact uh, on that side. Um, at which point, yeah, we'll, like we'll continue on with uh, integrations. So uh, one of our existing partners, ApeSwap, um, they've already launched on Polygon. So um, you know I'm sure we'll see that see them uh, on uh, Polygon as well too. So. On the other side of the jungle. Yep, exactly. <laughs> yeah, some of the community members, they were asking, you know, there was obviously a delay in the Polygon launch because they're seeing, you know, like dog coins get a bridge like right away. So they were wondering, you know, what was the hold up? But you, 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 you do confirm there was, it's the way that the contract is set up, the token is set up, requires a wrapper and um, a wrap token. And uh, it's, the, it's, the, it's the time lock I'm minting, basically. Um, gotcha. so because there's a time lock on the mint function on our current key contract, which means can't mint any new tokens, um, for like probably, yeah, Q4 2022, give or take, you know, depending on the block number. Um, that means that that contract isn't directly accepted for the Matic bridge, which otherwise would be a pretty hands-off process, right? Um. So in that sense, we actually have to, you know, do this extra work to have a wrapper token. And then, um, you know, basically you would stake your key fi in the wrapper token, you'd get wrapped key fi, then you would put the wrapped key fi through the bridge. And then that's how it gets onto Polygon still. So um, yeah, that, that, that was unfortunate, but um, you know, it is what it is still. Gotcha. Okay, Ben, I think that's it. And um, it's a pleasure. Thanks for the, uh, the time. Yeah, we'll see you in the next month's uh, interview. Awesome. Always a pleasure, Vinny.